What's going on, YouTube, Facebook, the internets? We are live here Wednesday night, 12 Volt Talk, High Five Vega. And who's this guy? I run Titan Car Audio. <laughs> it's the Rockville guy. Oh, I didn't go there. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no, man. We're not even 30 <laughs> seconds into the stream. And you oh, hit him already? That, was, that was just wrong. <laughs> Uh, this is Paul. I didn't get you to pronounce your last name. I don't want to say it wrong. Is it Galanos? Yeah, it is nowadays. <laughs> oh, you want, you want witness protection, son? What do you know about? <laughs> That's right. We, <laughs> we're telling everybody. All right. Yeah. So Paul's from uh, G2D Car Audio. We're gonna get into all that fun stuff and have him talk about his company, all the fun stuff they do. But, uh, yeah, we just want to get a quick check, make sure everybody can hear us okay. I'm yeah. sure that you can. <laughs> Somebody says yeah, Rock check, Bill one, Sam. Two, three. Oh, that's just wrong. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Hey, if we, get, uh, if we get 500 comments on here, i got about a dozen memes that will just blow the whole industry <laughs> apart. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to have to leave the link to, uh, well, we'll talk about that later. That, we'll, that we'll, was a very good meme week. That, that was, was a, a the good best meme. meme week. How many did you have saved? Had a long time. You had like 500 of them saved or something. It was crazy. I don't know, but we went through them for about two or three hours that <laughs> night and just <laughs> simple. Leave Bruce alone. Oh, yeah. to leave Brittany alone, guys. Leave Bruce yeah. alone. Did they do that yet <laughs> there or no? Yeah, they didn't do I that did, yet. I, we heard it here first. We get 33 percent each. All you need is a sheet. <laughs> Throw the sheet oh, over. I gotta cut Bruce in on that too. That's what the yeah. Oh man! All right, good deal. We got the peeps in the house here. We're gonna go ahead and get this party started, so we can find out what is up with Mr. Paul G. So first off, tell us, brother, how did you get into car audio? Um, I was twelve. Um, I, I grew up. I wouldn't say middle class. Um, we were we weren't poverty stricken by any means, but it was a big deal for me to have twenty bucks to spend at the flea market on the weekend, right? So. Uh, my mom would take uh, me and my sister down to the flea market because they had a little carnival. You know, I'd go play in the carnival. My mom and sister would go in and look at just ridiculous shit to put in the house. And um, I'd take my little $20 and I'd go blow it, of course, like a dumb kid would. And um, I saw a, a 63 Bel Air uh, go by. And it was beaten hard, hard, hard. This was, God, 92, right when the chronic came out pretty much. Uh, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, all that. Uh, the whole West Coast was on fire at that point. And I'd heard it in the parking lot, but after seeing that car, Dayton's or, Dayton's or Luxor's, I can't remember. I could see this whole car in my head uh, just like it was yesterday. But I was intrigued by it. I, clearly, I knew it was music. I wasn't that young. Um, so I went meandering around inside the flea market. And um, I, I went into a shop called Deep Bass Electronics. And uh, a buddy of mine that I've known ever since then, his name is Frank, uh, who now runs uh, Car Stereo Max here in North Part of Houston. He ran the shop, and him and his installer took time to talk to a 12-year-old kid because I gave him my 20 bucks. <laughs> I guess it was because I, I wasn't that special. So I give the 20 bucks. They're telling me all about it. And I'm looking, touching. Can I touch this guy? What is that? You know, I'm just ooing it. They were dead, apparently, at the time. They had time to kill on me. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to do that to my mom's car. You know, my mom's a single mom. There wasn't a father in the house to speak of. Um, that was it. You know? So I want to do something nice for my mom. Little did I know how expensive it was. This was 92. So I start stockpiling car audio and taking my $20. I'd pretend to go to the Ferris wheel or whatever have you, right? The ring toss. As soon as mom and sis were out of sight, I made a beeline for deep bass. And I'd go in there and I'd pick up my Ken. I picked up Kenwood three. Now this is all one piece of merchandise every other weekend. Kenwood three and a halves, Kenwood four by tens. This one, the 84 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, the V6 with a little bitty narrow back dash. Um, and it was all Kenwood speakers. And I got a Sony tape deck with the handles. I could carry it around in North line mall, like a G 12 year old idiot. And I uh, got a pair of Titan tens, the box. Once I got the big stuff, I had to cut my sister in on the deal. So she could help me. It's a surprise for mom, blah, blah, blah. And uh, finally one night it was time to put it all in. I stayed up all night and realized I didn't have a damn lick of wire. So I cut up two lamps, an iron, my grandmother's heating pad. I caught the most ass whoopings behind that part. And uh, oh, a couple of box fans. 
and I, the, the electrical cords from that is, is what I use to wire up this whole car. I got done probably 5.15 in the morning. My mom wakes up at 5. I snuck back in the house, um, took a spit bath real quick in the bathroom, started to make a bunch of noise, got dressed for school, the whole nine yards. And, you know, she came outside and put it on oldies 94.5 and uh, had it already ready to go. She let me put the keys in the ignition and start the car. Oh, my God, it was the biggest thing. And the um, minute she got in, she noticed the radio immediately. She didn't think speakers and subwoofers in the trunk. Had a Philips Sound Lab 300 by 2 a uh, pair of Titan tins with the green surround, a little MDF trash box. What an MDF, it's like particle board. But it banged, right? And it didn't catch the car on fire, thank God. And uh, it's about a two mile ass whooping to get to my uh, my middle school. And that's about where the ass whooping stopped. And then she just broke into tears and could not believe that I figured this out all on my own. So it was like this big grand thing that I, I couldn't I couldn't sit for homeroom and first period after that it kind of wore off but it was it was a rough morning but after that it was it was smooth sailing from there mom kind of dug it she didn't dig it too much kind of okay well that's good leave it like that and then ever since then i've been hooked i hear bass come by i try to guess what subs are in it what kind of car it is what size of subs you know it's just it's kind of been one of those things i just couldn't leave alone i tried my hand at you know i want to do this for a living i want to do that for a living i just it keeps circling back to car audio and that's just what it's been so that's that man that, that's a sweet setup i've had some i've had some of them titan tens recently so i don't know i, I, don't know. I found them on parts express i found yep. the, the party series with the purple cone and all that mm -hmm. actually don't move <laughs> he's got them while paul is getting that rob did you notice that yours has shown up the box that you made has shown up somewhere on the internet they're selling it for like 400 bucks yeah, yeah, I yeah. One. I seen that. <laughs> ah, boy, look at that Titan. There you go. That's what I rocked back in the day. Look at that. Isn't that embarrassing? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I put eight like, of them in a in an enclosure. I saw that. Did, did it really <laughs> hit for real? For real? Because no. I couldn't make these hit at all. They, they yeah. sound. It sounded good, but it you know it oh, ain't it ain't no. playing. 30 hertz we, we were just saying that somebody on facebook marketplace has marked up uh rob's box to like 350 400 bucks and says it's a you know spl box or something oh, <laughs> he sold it a while back and it made its way around and of course you know how yeah. things happen on facebook I've had, a, I've had a box here in town it was for four db drive eights uh it was a stack fab curve setup and that thing's been in god we did this box like two weeks after Sound Evolution opened, so that tells you a minute. It's been a minute. This box has sold like six or seven times. Every now and then, I'll see it marketplace. Same thing. Price gets higher and higher and higher every <laughs> time. I'm sure they Swiss cheese the hell out of the front of that thing. So, but yeah, come a long way. Come a yeah, long gained, it gains way. value. <laughs> yep. So, so what was your first system like in your car that you were proud of that you can remember? I I went through a bunch. Um, my first car that I ever owned was uh 83 Grand Prix Pontiac. I went through a bunch of junk in there, kind of, kind of, you know, fiddle around, learn, practice. Uh, there's an old dude at O'Reilly's, uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts in my neighborhood taught me a lot, believe it or not. Uh, I want to say he's like the assistant manager and, you know, he'd come up and find stuff for me and call me, Hey, come on up to the shop. I got a pair of soap 12s, <laughs> whatever the hell that is. Okay, cool. I'll be up there. So I went through a whole bunch, and then after that car, after the water pump took a dump in that car, and I sold it for two hundred bucks. Stupid. Uh, I picked up an '89 town car. By the time I got done with it, it had sixty-five hundred dollars worth of pearl paint, one hundred and eight-foot Kragers, uh, sixteen switches like Dre, because you had that's what you had to have. Uh, and then I had six punch power DVC fifteens in a sixth order in the trunk. It was a horrible sixth order, but it got it beat. Uh, two Soundstream Tarantula uh, monoblocks, the Da Vinci four channel. Um, I don't know what ohm load I wired it to, but I know the Da Vinci didn't care. Had a wall of Blaupunk Punk six by nines on the back wall, no seats, elevated amps off the floor where the seat cushion was, yellow top off the motor bus bar all the way across, crushed velvet interior. Every girl on the block could take prom pictures on my dash. It was badass. So yeah, that was that, that was pretty. That cool. was like the quintessential. Houston ride right there. Oh, bro. Would you, would you explain? Slabs. I was rocking slabs long before y'all would think yeah. I ever would. I promise you that. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, Derek, he just recently blew up a tarantula amp. 
<laughs> a new one or an old old one? Totally not my fault. It was a TR two thousand. That's the old old one. Yeah, I, it, it wasn't my fault. It was. I had chrome, gold, to, chrome. Oh my god, and they were elevated. Those were some heavy bastards. Yes, and try to open yeah. one up. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> it took us like 30 minutes, I think, right, Rob, just to get the top off. Three people, 30 yeah. minutes, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it was yeah. about eight screws, maybe. What? Yeah, well, that's just to get the one yeah, piece. And you have, it it's, it's like a puzzle. Once you start taking it apart, everything like kind of falls in on itself. But but when it catches on fire, you can yeah, it, get it the rest of the pretty fast. <laughs> Rob Rob doesn't realize the uh, you know when you test things you just kind of you're kind of prepared for amps to blow up so you just kind of sit there on the edge the whole time. So what? And, why did it blow up? How did I miss this? Yeah, uh, you know it's what friggin' twenty years old, so it's probably yeah. you know got That's swollen right caps look. or something. It was oh, also it was also three in the morning. <laughs> We yeah, probably slept was, two hours the whole weekend. Who knows? Yeah, who knows if we hooked it up right? I mean, we yeah. never hook anything up wrong, but like the uh, it, it, it was just old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a. I tell you, you, you think that's bad. Um, in the same town car before I did the whole system, I had been paying CJ Sounds for what seemed like thirty years on a layaway. And this layaway was for two eighteens, and they were strokers. So I built the box. And I had it designed by Sir Wim Vega, got it in the trunk, had one of the tarantulas, right? Um, I think they were single fours, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. Um, got the layaway paid off, and I got 15 screws in. And screw number 16, and the entire electric power drill down to the cord went completely through the cone. I was 19, and I literally laid down on the ground, and it was kind of like a snow I was kicking and screaming. Like, I banged my knee and my foot up all on my ankle on the bumper of my car. I was crying like a blithering. I threw a hissy fit. I threw a complete, like, DEFCON 4 temper tantrum, and I cried and sweat so much that I'd literally worked up the dirt on the ground. I was covered in mud. It looked like I just walked up from Woodstock. And it was probably the worst day in... in uh, and car audio for me is pretty bad. Like you know, I just messed up the holy grail of subwoofers. That was it was bad. I didn't touch one again until when we were doing car audio dynasty over at Sound Evolution. This is literally the first time I touched one again since. So it was. I was very like when you touch your first newborn, you're like, I don't know. You need to go ahead. I'll watch. You know. But yeah. yeah, I'm sure you've seen uh, Ed Lester's video on the the Stroker. He he did like a whole, he did a really cool video. If you haven't yeah, seen did. it, you have to check it out. He did a oh. uh, like a history of the Sir Vegas Stroker, and he talked about why it was so popular and why it was made and, yep. and all that. You have to check it out if you haven't seen That's it. It's on really the good. Charles movie and Earthquake and all that. He did an episode <laughs> on uh, on Dynasty when I was at Sound Evolution. Did an episode on that. It was actually pretty cool. There's a lot of history behind it. And the folks at Sorwin Vega, thankfully, some of the people that are extremely knowledgeable in the history of the stroker are still there. So that's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's that's cool. that's hard to find. We found out with especially with the old school car audio stuff, you know, a lot of the guys who uh, were big back in the eighties and early nineties are no longer around at the company. So whenever you have people there that not only have experienced it but even you know the ones that have any of the documentation or anything available it's it's cool for us to see that because you don't always see it so if there is well, another cool thing is you start looking at all the old like how y'all put i've seen you post up some old magazine covers and stuff like that like oh damn dude, that's bill proud his ranger or blah 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 well, i'm sure he's not dead let's look him up on facebook i troll the shit out of these old Sura Vega guys They're like oh you accepted my friend request meanwhile i've, <laughs> I've got like you know, whoever big wig and currently car audio like sending me messages. I'm like, dude, stop. Hold on. Hi, I'm Mr. Prout. My name is Paul. I'm from Houston. I'm one of your biggest fans. I have all your old magazines. Can you please help me design a like these guys are they're there. They're there. Like I've I just talked to Bill the other day about some six and a half he's doing up underneath the backseat of his truck. Like really cool dude. So thankfully there's a lot of that knowledge left around and um I'm blessed right now to be, I've got the actual stroker van here in the driveway. Um, I've got six of the new 15s in there on, on 12 of the stroker pro amps. And I love it. That's the only subwoofer that let the bass hit. That will scare the shit out of me. Like I've never heard an accurate sub like that. There's nothing 
I, I used to sell sixty and hundred thousand dollar home theater systems, door to door. Believe that. I've never heard any bass like this in a stupid band. You know, even wow. when I had him in the excursion, just goofing around trying to figure out where the weak points are, so I don't blow up as many. Um, even though I did, but they're they're pretty scary subs. That's sweet. We'll have to check some of those out, Rob. So, um, do you have like a unicorn piece of gear that you've uh, obtained over the years that you'll never get rid of? Anything like that? I'm on the quest for it, and every time I see John Kerry post one up, I think to myself. I need that, and it's an old school stroker, the the same one I put the drill through. I need to find a stroker eighteen. I don't have it yet. Now, if the garage wasn't full of Stroker Pro Classic remake fifteens, the new ones, um, I would probably grab the next one I saw. I've just got so many strokers in this house and in the van and the garage that coming home with another one is just like almost asking for a domestic dispute, um, which is kind of tough to do because my wife's the administrative director for Yusaki. She has been a judge since she was a teenager. So I show home with like, there's subwoofers everywhere. This is the living room. There's one in the kitchen. There's two up there on the fridge. And the garage is full. And so I come home with subs and it's like, oh, cool. Did you bring me one? Like there is no complaining. Like I'm so super blessed. But I know if I come home with another stroker, it's going to be like, really? You really needed to do that? And I'm walking around with a six month old purse, you know. But I really <laughs> I need to I need to get one. I need to get one big time. That's my holy grail. Granted, I've got Stroker Pro after Stroker Pro. They're everywhere. But the original, the OG, uh Ken Koga, Gene Serwinski, Stroker. I need an eighteen. I need an eighteen. So I feel you, man. My last name's literally Vega and I've <laughs> never owned, I've never owned one. You got to. Oh my God. Dude, I'm building a folded horn for the living room right now. It's in pieces in the garage. Well, she know, now she knows. It doesn't matter now. So I'm building a big ass <laughs> box that I'm going to put in the living room. Um, I've got a I've got a really nice plate amp. Um, I had somebody build for me. So I'm going to see how much of the living room I could take up. It's, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. And it's going to be for uh, I don't know yet. I don't know. I have not made a baffle for it. So it could be one of my 15s that I've got, one of my spares. Um, I'd really like to see if I could snag an old one though, but I feel so bad if I finally get an old one in good shape and it just, I mess it up, you know, after a while, that stuff gets so old and brittle. It's like, uh, you don't want to, you and know, there's no recon kits for them. Anymore. Well, there are, there are the, they're making them? Yeah, they've been making them for the old the, ones. For right? the old ones? Yes. I forget oh. the guy's name. I'll message it to you. I swear to God, he's been making yeah. it for 15 years. Dude. Uh, this... and they're not even that expensive. You, I'll tell you what though. Uh, I have seen the inside firsthand of an old stroker and this new one. You got me eight ways of stupid. If you think I'm a recall of these new ones, there's 38 bolts in that driver. Wow. 38 bolts. There's a freaking Ziploc bag. You have a full court size Ziploc bag full of bolts, bolts <laughs> and lock washers. You, no, okay. I'm good. Thank God they got a warrant, right? You send them off, send them off as someone doing. I got a number. You got to videotape the whole teardown just to make sure you like, why do I have extra parts? The yeah. power, the power will find out where I didn't put the. Like, yeah, I'm not doing that. The old stroker was not this complex, but they they put a lot into these new ones. It's sick. I, I blew one completely to smithereens. It's like, well, there's no coming back from this. So let's just cut it up. It's like 45 minutes to tear it down. Literally, the heat wow. seeking. Oh, this thing is dope. I've never seen anything like this in my life. So yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day I can afford Ken Koga. <laughs> So, so you consider yourself more of an SPL guy or an SQ guy, or are you somewhere in between? I was always SPL for the longest um, until I sat in a true SQ car. And right, I'm six foot two seventy five, big fat Texas boy. Right, I could punch the ass out of half this country. But when you get out of a a really really well developed SQ vehicle and your hair on your arm is standing up and you're at a loss for words. And you, I talk a lot. Like I can run my mouth. I don't breathe. I got all the oxygen I needed at birth, right? When you get out of a really badass SQ car and you can't friggin' talk and it takes your wife to come over and like, hey, woohoo, do that to you just to get you to like, oh, hey, hi. And, and it's hard to explain. I've explained this to customers. And you can just see the deer in headlights look in their face. It's like, okay, yeah, sounds like a glorified sales pitch. Like, bro, I couldn't talk. Like, 
it's nuts when the music is coming at you from every direction, when the vocalist feels like they're going to step into your face and, and just spit on you because they're so close right here. When these guys could do stuff like that, it is scary. And I have so much of a more of a, a dip, I won't say more respect, I'll say a, a more profound respect of a certain type for guys that can uh, design an audio system that can do something like that. Uh, it's nuts. I've said in a couple where like the helicopter's coming to get you and you're held up in this room, but there's no narration. You just know you're held up in a room and you know that sounds like a cedar wall. There's a bug right there and it, it sounds like it's about this big. It's like, how in the hell is my brain putting all this together and then somebody else will sit in it and they see it and feel it a totally different way, but it's like a good SQ system will appeal to your sixth sense i don't know how to really explain it but everybody i've explained it to like that that's actually set in when they get out and they look at me and they give me that like you're right i i, I speechless just speechless so man, it's, it's like a hard thing like my heart's in spl really is but i have a much deeper appreciation for sound quality uh when you can get in a car and the last thing on your mind after you get out is bass or a term lab or an SPL score or peak frequency, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's speaking to you on all levels. You're like, now I really feel Frank Sinatra, or now I re I've sat in a SQ car and listened to spoken word poetry. It's freaking dope. You've got to do it. It's crazy. Like, you sit in there and listen to anything, and you get out, and you're like, damn, it took a mastermind, it seems, to put this together. This is insane. So, I've got a much more profound respect for that type of skill than SPL skill, I want to say. Uh, even though I'll still say my heart is SPL, um, I, I, I can't pick. It's it's one of those things I just can't pick. It's two different things. You know, it's like, what what do you like better, your car or your house? Yeah. Talking, talking about two different things here. I can't do one without the other. I could, but yeah. FML, right? Let's say if you're like me, you just you, you want that SQ sound. You're trying to recreate it. But then when you show someone your system, you know you're not there. So you just lay the gravy on, turn them subs up. Listen to this. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I, I've been that a time or two. I'm not all it, I'm it's not much all easier to impress them with the bass than it is yeah. with the SQ because that's, <laughs> like you said, yeah, well, Paul. I was when I used to complete or compete the pro audios on the door and the four screaming super tweeters on way too much square wave and, and power. And it's like, what do you think? And then you see the guy you're giving a demo to. He's like, hmm. Mm. Like, Piss off. He hit the bass knob on his ass and blow him out of the car. There you go. Get out of my car. Next. You know, like one's going to work. One's going to work. I just, I search for that scenario where they both work in perfect harmony and it's like unbelievable. Yeah, it's really difficult, you know, with especially with the YouTube thing and doing videos to, to portray any kind of sound quality. So most people don't even try to go there because even the ones you've seen where people set up multiple mics in the car and, you know, try, you can't get the experience unless you're physically there. So yep. that's the hard thing about, you know, trying to portray you know, what the differences are. And I think your explanation was, was spot on when you get out and your hair standing up and you hear things that you've never heard before. And it's things like that, that you really, yep. you have to experience it. You know, it's like having children, you have to experience it. You can't tell people how it is. I, I won't say who it is, but there, there was a guy who had a really good SQ system and it's like, Oh, I got some Michael Jackson. This Michael Jackson. I knew Michael Jackson. You don't know Michael Jackson, you're a moron. he have been living under a bloody rock, but, it just, I never listened to his music. So I listened to Michael Jackson in his car. He tried to do the whole Phil Collins thing. I don't want to hear that. And then he started playing like old bluegrass. And I don't listen to that crap. Like, I do. If y'all, if anybody knows me, y'all know I can't stand country music. I can't stand it, right? That mean it's bad. It's just not for me. And I got out of that damn car and it was all country, no bluegrass. And it's like, God, that was beautiful. Beautiful, like beautiful, like this is like '60s remastered country music or some such, you know. And uh, it it was insane. And your your appreciation for pure art form will tenfold overcome your musical taste if you give it a chance. It's crazy. It really is. So. Sorry, I didn't know how to work my stuff here. <laughs> I've never um, been. Yeah, yeah, this technology is too, is too too much for me. Um, what about Car Audio Dynasty? I know some of the people here 
that are watching 12 volt talk probably have seen that show and if they haven't i posted the link in the video description and we'll have it in the, in the link here in the description rob and i were talking about beforehand and about how you know that was in the days when i think about the same time when Soundman was doing their kind of reality quote unquote shows but i think when when i noticed the car audio dynasty it was really like discovery channel quality and it was really cool and i know you know, you were the one that kind of made the show because you were the personality, but yeah. overall it was a, it was a neat experience to see, you know, what happens at a car audio shop and just tell us a little bit about, you know, that show and how you got involved with it. We had me and, okay. So me and Jake and Jess, Jesty started the company, right? It's their shop. I just, it's like, Paul, we need you. Otherwise this is not going to, okay, well, I don't know how good I am, but let's give it a shot. Right. So we built it. Okay, we're doing good. Making money, doing this, hire some people, hire some people, build a few badass rides, pop a couple of records. Uh, okay, cool. And we start looking at it like, man, we've really got to start doing a little bit better job for like Instagram and Facebook and all that, and maybe even YouTube. So we're looking at some of the cool Instagram videos, cool, good quality production Instagram videos from, from some shops here in Houston, right? And I'm looking at it like, damn, that makes those guys look like they are a million, billion dollar facility. Never mind, we just got done fixing one of their installs where somebody put a screw through a battery, you know? Uh, like, okay, well, that's complete BS. There should be no, like, that can't last. Somebody's going to shoot their ass for trash work, right? This is a shop that was very close to us. Like, but look how they appear online, you know? So that's, we need to appear online like that. So I kind of put the bug in there. I said, man, let's just try it. See if we can find some local, some young folks to videotape this stuff or whatever the hell it's called, edit and take B-roll. I started learning all kinds of terminology. It was really cool. And uh, Jess was like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll go ahead and do it. And Jess was with, there with me every day. So, you know, we kind of started talking like, this is how we're going to put it together and this and that. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? We bounce it back and forth. And then we talked to the young guys that were coming in doing the work for us. I said, okay, cool. You know, we got a feel for it. We can dig it, you know. So this is how it's going to work. Okay, so we started doing it. I'm like, all right, this is pretty badass. And um, I love doing it. I really, really did. The pro the only real problem that we had is keeping it consistent because you can't always find the most reliable, you know, people. Uh, the work was, just for what I do, uh, it's phenomenal. And I still think it's really damn good. Uh, it was that, and it was like, man, this is really cutting into the days big time. Like, do we want to spend the night here doing this stuff? Like, we got to have, it's got to look like it's the middle of the day during work hours. Installers here, this guy's doing this, that guy's doing that. And, you know, you run to the bank, and I'll go over here and blow this windshield up or whatever, you know. And it, and it really cut into the day, and it's like, all right, cool. We need to restructure a little bit. We're about to get back around to it, and it just kind of lost steam, you know. Uh, but we all enjoy doing it. It's just one of those things like, hey, it made us a little bit of money, but it wasn't the big overwhelming success that we had envisioned. Now, whether we were on the right track or not and what we expected, who knows? You know? Yeah, it's I think it's good to for people to get an idea of the work involved with it because you know, a lot of times they'll see a video like a lot of these are, what, 14, 15 minutes, 11 minutes, 17, whatever. But people yeah. see and watch a video like that and they, they can't really grasp. It's almost like, you know, the overhauling shows, right? They show a, a 40 minute overhauling that it took them two or three weeks or even a month or more to film it and all the editing and everything that goes on. So people can't really grasp that unless you're involved with it. So it's cool that you're kind of on both sides. You got to experience it and you got to, um, you know, you got to be involved with, with the whole process of the editing and everything. Cause it is a yeah, lot. I mean, we, that was the nightmare and I've got, Oh, I've got a freaking potty mouth. Like, bro, you don't even know. I've been in, I've been working in shops too long. Uh, but bad potty mouth that and I, uh, I smoke, you know, so I do my best thinking when I'm outside cursing and smoking to myself. So that doesn't make for good B roll. That's not very presentable. So it was, it was, it was one of those things where, like, we got to make sure that we edit some of this stuff out. Like, we got into arguments. I mean, it was it was fun arguing. We weren't like going to beat each other up or nothing, but you know, arguments of you know, well, we broke the woofer. What the f were you thinking? And yada yada. And we're like, all right, well, look, we got to. Some of this is good for this, and some of this is not good for for the viewer to see because then we look like a bunch of ragtag morons 
when in actuality we'll, we'll beat the brakes off half these installers in Houston, hands down, even the fabricators. And uh, it's like, yeah, be careful how you represent yourself. So we're going back and we're in the office and we're looking and we're looking and we're looking. And the guys are like, bro, we got to go. We're like, what do you mean? Oh, shit, it's nine o'clock. But God, I'm going to get killed when I get home. <laughs> You know, it's like God, we we gotta we gotta do better at this. This this right here can't work anymore. So it was it was it was work. It was a lot of work. And when they left, we were paying them. When a customer leaves, they're paying us. They're like, where do you draw the line on a limited? You know, we're we're not living there. You get burned out quick. And then when you're burned out, you don't do your best work. You don't provide the best customer service. You hear the phone ring the fourth time. You're like, dude, just stop. You can't. You see what I mean? You can't. Uh, you can't bury yourself too too deep. And, and stuff that's uh, not producing immediate fruit. Sometimes you gotta kind of gotta stay on top of things. You know? Yeah, and pe- people don't really understand. Like everything you see on screen, someone thought about that. Someone had to take the time to do that. It's it's just all a bit of a process that unless you've done it, you just you don't really understand it. Yep, that's for sure. That's for sure. Looks like right, let's get. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, like, see, the thing is, we don't we don't think about it. We just do. So, or I yeah, do, anyways. I, Derek I thinks. To, I'd love to get on YouTube and be a freaking idiot all day long because that's all yeah. I can be. You know, y'all are just a little bit more talented in that regard than I am. But now I don't even have the time. Like I really want to. So I figured, oh, I'll just get a YouTube channel. I got a anechoic chamber, kind of sort of. You know, where I do all my testing and all that. I can make some cool tutorials and this and that. And then the phone rings. And somebody shows up, and then the phone rings again. Now that phone's ringing, this phone's ringing. I'm on my cell phone. This guy's staring at me. But I'm not making YouTube nothing anytime soon, you know. So, but that's going to change here pretty soon. I've got some, I got some fun stuff in the works. So. Oh, looking forward to it. I yeah, see. I always get the uh, the wife with the kids. I'm out there doing the garage shooting videos or whatever. They can't let me be out there by myself. There has to be, there's some important question that needs to be answered immediately. It can't wait till I cut this wood and film it. But before you needed to film anything, there were no questions that needed answered. Right. <laughs> right. Nobody hey, wanted Dad, to What's for dinner? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. It wasn't even that. Thankfully, I do, I don't, I don't know if what I do is a lot or a little compared to some other guys, especially like you guys, but I'm live. My daughter's in there with a the dog. Keeping it quiet, the jingly collars not making no noise. She comes back in here and waves at me, and I realize I didn't plug the laptop in. So she did that for me. The wife's out in the garage doing her thing. So I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'll put it that way. I don't, I don't get bugged too much, but I try my best to just draw the freaking line. You know, like today we had a, we had a funeral. You know, so I kind of had to draw the line today. Word doesn't always make its way around to everybody, but you know, I draw the line, and fortunately, I've. Uh, I don't know if it's something I did or if it's I'm just blessed with people that can cater just a little bit from time to time. But I get left alone for the most part. And then sometimes I, when I get done, I just don't want to leave them alone. So I go in there and play Legos or sell yeah. my food on purpose and make the wife clean it. <laughs> yeah, it's all about balance, man. Balance the family, the home, the work, the, the oh, hobbies. Yeah. Derek knows. Yep. <clears throat> balancing is difficult. <laughs> so speaking of balance, I mean, this is part of, um, you know, what you deal with every day being involved with social media. How do you feel the impact of social media has affected car audio? Has it been a positive thing, a negative thing? Is it somewhere in the middle? What do you think? It's been both. Um, and the reason why I say that is the advancement of social media has given uh, fellows like myself, um, a better platform to make a living for our families. Uh, it's given a lot of independent startup companies and brands um, an immediate platform with minimal investment, if not, literally no investment. So it, it's it's a cool way to reach people. And just through social media alone, I could tell you right now that speaking on behalf of, of USACI, I'm a certified judge and marketing director for USACI and yada yada and all that, right? The fact that I can make one post and I can get 200 people at a show, the fact that I can make two posts and get 700 people at a show, whereas before, what do you? I mean, what were we doing? We were mailing letters. You were paying a magazine to put a, a thing in a magazine. Hopefully, people go to the drugstore and buy the magazine or buy a subscription through the mail. I mean, 
that's not hard to reach people now, it really isn't. So if there's something going on, you can reach people, you know. Um, but at the same token, I, I kind of think in a sense, yeah, it's kind of a bad thing because you have the customer at large that has become a little pampered. You're going outside? Okay. Thank you for being quiet. Okay, bye. Oh, sorry. Um, the customer at large is a little bit pampered, I feel. Uh, I think that it, it brings with it a lot of sense of entitlement. Um, and, it, and it's not just social media. There's other stuff. I mean, you know, you start taking parents out the home and, and all that kind of stuff. And it just adversely affects the way people deal with problems. You know, uh, if I have a problem with a, a product I purchase or a certain level of service, there's a certain way I handle it. I was just raised a certain way. Not better, not worse. Just the way I was raised is you handle it a certain way. You don't get online brand bash unless it's Rockville or, you know, you, you, you handle yourself a certain way. And I think with the way social media is, it's become trendy to be a troll. Um, I think it's become uh, trendy to speak out of line. Uh, it's become trendy to jump to conclusions. Um, you know, there's a lot of misinformation floating around out there. So I think the person that ultimately suffers <coughs> is the customer at large. Uh, you got people talking about a big three kit, you know, you're charging stud to the frame. No, you just, you realize you just told 92,000 people that you freaking idiot. Like, shut up. Like you want to choke the shit out of them, but they've said it and, and, and now it's out there. Now you got to wait on an admin to delete it or somebody to correct them. And if somebody does correct them. Then it's like, okay, the next 40 people that are going to see this, who are they going to believe? Now they're like, Bleh. you know, well, I work in a shop. Well, I work in a shop. I'm not going to. If two shops can't even agree. You got installers chit chatting back and forth online about this kind of stuff. It's like, guys, like, you wonder why DIY is growing, you know? And ultimately, man, it, it leads to people buying the wrong product, not knowing how to tune it, wanting to DIY, and mess it up. Or they buy the wrong thing to begin with, and it's not what they wanted. So you're, you bought an audio system, then you bought an audio system. You bought another audio system. Now you have another audio system. Now you like this one. Well, that's great. You do. You like that. You paid four audio systems. You got one. Hi. I wonder why you can't put a down payment on a house. Now what? Got to think, you know. So it's social media has been a blessing and it's been a hindrance. And it's just one of those things like it's, it, it's just going to kind of come with the territory. Let's try our best as professionals to find every single benefit we can of this and flood 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 these news feeds with the benefits the benefits the benefits and um you know human beings as a whole i feel will naturally gravitate toward positive attention before they would negative attention and i think negative attention comes from people not getting what they feel they deserve so they go act ass act a fool spread bs you know and it's it's, it's a troll palace you know it's a troll palace i, I was I was a part of it. I w it wouldn't bother me in the least. I don't give a shit what company you ran. Well, hi, Mr. Fargate. You can kiss my fat white. You know, it wouldn't bother me. And then you look at it. It's like, guys, damn, I'm part of the problem. So, you know, so you kind of want to right, pull on my big boy pants and, and embrace the positivity and push as much as you possibly can. You know, you can you can spread good knowledge without sounding condescending. You can you can spread a little good cheer without bashing. You know. Not that many people that deserve a good public bashing. We can name them. I mean, yeah, it, it's yeah. I mean, that's, that's a that's a great explanation because I you know I'm thinking the same thing because it's it's like you you think about all the you, I mean you can think about some of the negative parts. There definitely is some. There's trolls. Yeah. There's um, just irrational thoughts that people have. But if you think about the positive side, like you just talked about, being able to create your own business you know, be able to, to make your own videos and share them with the world and just the things that you could do that pre internet. I mean, like you said, we were looking at magazines. We were, you know, getting letters in the mail and looking at literature. You're raising a kid. Let's say you're raising a kid, right? Why get mad at the kid? Well, the kid did something bad. What did the kid do? Oh, you didn't see it. You weren't there. Why weren't you there? Why weren't you there doing your job as a parent? Why are we there? doing our job, so lickety-split here doesn't get online and talk mess about sundown. So, what do they call it? Sun sun trash or whatever the... Or, or is that scar? Or whatever the hell. So people brand bash, right? 
it's un- it's unnecessary. It's uncalled for stupidity. Um, for the most part, right? I, you know. So it's but if you're there, and if there's enough people that are constantly flooding social media with all the benefits of having access to people like us, to installers, to manufacturers. Like I've seen Jacob Fuller do get online and do all kinds of stuff, like helpful stuff, you know? And that's why I push all the manufacturers I do business with. Hey dude, jump on live with me. Let's talk to I'm selling your product to these customers. They want to see what your freaking face looks like. They want to talk to you. They want to learn a little bit. I get so like I don't have nobody. Nobody reaches out to me and says, I'm a bullshit. No trolls. But the trolls are talking to me and the trolls are not complaining. The trolls are saying, dude, that's actually your stand up dude. That's cool. I don't need to pat myself on the back. I just, I got to go do it again. We got to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. We can't stop, you know, if we want this thing to work. Otherwise, this car audio is going to turn into Antifa. I just lost sales by saying that, I'm sure. Well, you know, the thing is, like, I always try to subvert what the reaction they want. Like, when I see a troll, I hit them either with something funny or to show like, hey, yeah, I could take a joke. You know, you're clowning or whatever. That's what we do. That's what I've been doing since I've been, you know, 12 years old. We clown and all that. And a lot of times you can kind of reach past that first. That's that's their wall that they put up. They're just going to be the troll. And and if you could get past that sometimes, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can. And, and then you get to the good people. I don't know, but I mean, you gotta think, man. These guys are getting on the internet, and they'll trash a brand, or they'll spread misinformation, or you know, they'll just just be outright rude to people. And usually, what I found that works the best, I'll just hit them with about six paragraphs of knowledge, completely respectful for the most part, and it's gone. Like, I don't know, tuck tail and ran or looked at it and said, man, damn, I feel like an idiot. Well, don't feel like an idiot. Just say, okay, cool. I got you. you know, I'm with you, you know. And that's that's usually for me what will stop it, you know. Um, I'll, I'll, I don't really have time for a lot of it anymore. The, the phone, the, the emails, everything just keeps blowing up. And I'm a very small outfit, and it's, it's stressful. So I don't get to see a lot of it anymore, but some of it I just had to walk away from there for a minute because – Human beings will be human beings, you know, and you cannot let it get the best of you. And I've done it. I've let it get the best of me so many times to the point to where it's, you know, I'm thinking back to pre-sound evolution days, you know, dip text. Hey, here's the address. Uh, you want to talk that hot shit? Come on. And it's, I'm doing. Now, will I make 10 grand that day? Oh, yeah. Ah, easy. Because of that. That's not how I want to do it, man. That's not how I want to do it. You know, um, felt good at the time, but what is it? You know, I got a ten thousand dollar day, a twelve thousand dollar day. Then next day is gonna be junk. You know, if you're not if you're not feeding the machine the right fuel, it's not gonna produce. That's all there is to it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, sometimes I do stuff just so people will clown on me, like running CCA wire, just so I can see what kind of creative jokes they can they can come at me with because it's it's entertainment to me. You know, I I, I like doing things like that. For one thing, so I could test them so somebody else, I can show you like what happened, the advantage, the disadvantage. And I don't like to speak on things that I haven't tested myself. So sometimes I do stupid stuff like that. Sometimes I'll do a top five list and I'll throw a random amp in there, iPhonics, and just see what people say. Just just to see what people will say. Did you see uh, what they did? I believe it alone. Man, <laughs> on another forum, I got there. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's jump off of that real quick. Yeah, yeah well, let's make it. Let's make the segue um, over to G two D audio. You got know, to tell us a little bit about, um, you know, with with you being the personality. I think it's very apparent. Anybody who's watching this show can tell that you have kind of this magnetic personality. You're you're somebody that people just want to listen to. Right. You, you speak a lot of, um, you, you say things that just draw people in and that's just, you know, you just have that gift. So that, that's, that's one thing I would say. And, you know, obviously the car audio dynasty, you were kind of the, the star of the show. So when you decided to, you know, kind of do your own thing on G2 dynamics, just tell us kind of what your thought pattern was and uh, how that got started up. I wanted to go make woofers. I- been designing woofers it's like 
man, I want to do something. I just want to design woofers. Like literally, that was the thought. Like that was the that was the gigantic business plan that I could have put on a post it. Um, I had I had plenty of connections, knew plenty of people. I've done this before. Um, I've QC'd sample product. I've built sample product. Um, so I've been around it. I'm, I'm perfectly accustomed to it, you know. So what I wanted to do, though, I said, well, let me come out with subwoofers. I, I learned from a good friend of mine, do not come out with a $1,000 subwoofer right out the gate. God, don't do that. And, and don't get laughed off the street coming out with a $500 RMS subwoofer, especially when your foothold is in social media. you got to kind of middle of the road this thing. So I was like, all right, 1000 to 1500 RMS is kind of where I want to be. But what's the hot thing right now? Um, I run competitions all the time, right? Me and the missus see probably 3,000 different people a year at, at car shows. And we're watching the demo guys and we're watching the YouTube videos that are kicking ass. And it's like, bro, these guys are doing nothing but moving hair and playing two hertz. So let's make a woofer that'll move some hair and play two hertz that doesn't cost a freaking thousand dollars. You know, you look at Joe Blow on YouTube, and it's like, dude, I want that. What are those? Type it in. Ooh, 1850 a piece? Hell no. Log off, and it stops. You know, And every now and then, you snag one. It's good marketing for the company trying to sell that. $2,000, $1,500, $1,000 woofer. But it's few and far between in that you're not really doing a whole bunch. Like, well, I'm not going to sit here, and my virgin line is going to be a 500 RMS driver. So i got to hit a certain power point. I'd like to stay within a certain price point, but honestly, I kind of know where I'm playing. I know where I'll wind up, give or take. I'll worry about that last. You know, people don't want to buy them, they don't want to buy them. Um, so my biggest two things were I needed to be able to play low, comfortably, accurately. Um, I definitely wanted something with good enough excursion or better, you know. Um, I, I definitely wanted for the spec guys out there, the, the, the TSP gurus, I wanted to show them something nice. Uh, but I also wanted some good cosmetics, and I didn't want to get into a ton of tooling because, honestly, this whole thing kind of started out as experimentation. Um, but I said, you know what, I, I need, you know, I want to be able to handle on high excursion. I really like that rib surround. There's been a few rib surrounds that have, that have failed historically in the community, and I was kind of puzzled by it. And then I started researching how they were pressed, what they're made from, uh, yada, yada, you know, all the, all the production data and all that. I said, man, I really like this surround. I've seen it working. I want to use that. So I started piecing things together, and a couple things didn't work out for me. I wanted a little bit heavier moving mass. Uh, finally wound up with what we had you know, as far as the Generation 1 uh, Genesis sub. Um, I kind of wanted to do 18s right off the rip. You know, I was like, well, no, these, these things have to sell. i got to stop. I got to take off the SPL cap and, and put on the I'm a generic consumer cap. What's hot? What's freaking hot? Well, eights are hot. I got to have eights. People are throwing eights and six and a halves underneath the seats of pickup trucks like nobody's business. This is what's going to put my kid through college. So I got to, you know, yeah, I can innovate. Yeah, I can bring out things I like. But at the end of the day, I've got to sell those things to you guys. And maybe you don't, maybe you don't want a 24 inch woofer, you know, <laughs> like who the, who the hell is going to buy that, you know? Um, so figure out what's going to sell, you know, it's got to look the part. It's got to sound the part. Uh, it's got to be reliable and durable. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you straight up. There's not a human being on this planet that abuses woofers like me. Um, I've, I've put these things on way too much power. You all saw what Ronnie Smith did to my eight. I didn't want to see what 5,000 Watts would do to eight. I wanted to see what 28,000 clamps would do. Did it. Lithium, hardly any voltage drop. And I know exactly where they break. I know exactly where the weak spots are. And you've got to be one of the world's most abusive individuals to tear up one of these woofers. Um, you got to be extremely careless. And that's one thing I really wanted to go for. When you start out small, I can't, I can't swing 30, 40% warranty claims on bad batch or some kind of oversight production. I went back and forth on this for a while. This is not, Hey, Chinese buffet, you know, put my sticker. You know, this wasn't this wasn't one of those things, you know. Everybody's stuff comes from China. We all know this, for the most part, for the most part. And kudos to the guys building here in the U.S., but you, you can't just go over there willy-nilly and, yeah, sure, give me, I don't know, 200 of, what is that? Is that even a woofer? It looks like, well, just go ahead and put the sticker on it and send it. We'll figure it out later. You know, then you got the XO making videos about you. I don't, I don't, I didn't want that. You know, so and that and it took a long time to come out with these. Now, 
out of 800 drivers, I just sold the last two about a week and a half ago. There were eights, <coughs> like what you have pictured right here. And uh, out of all those drivers, I've got three blown eights that were wired to 0.7 on a pair of RD D9s strapped. 0.35, 0 0.3. Yeah, I, I saw that head shake. You know why those blew up. It's just, it, you know, silliness. Um, and then some dingleberry put a 15 in a two cubic foot box tuned at 51 hertz with like 22 square inches of port per cube on a Terrence 3K. Got 11. So, so Derek stumbled onto to this part on your website that I liked the first time I've seen it. Can you tell us what the max power rating on this subwoofer is? The, the max power is when you blow it up. <laughs> don't. I don't know why people get so technical. To, to, to call it <laughs> consultive power. Or what, bro, it's freaking RMS. Call it a day. Stop confusing people. What do you need max for? What do you need yeah. max for? You want, you want max? I'll tell you what max is. I got a video of popping that woofer right there on 28K. I'm not going to put that. At 27K, it wasn't max. It was working. Oh? <laughs> that was it's a, it's you know what, what do they what do they call it? Barry? God dang it! Uh, program power. PMPO. Uh, ah, <laughs> stop, engineer. Blah blah blah. Stop. Just just stop. put max power on there as much as you can feed it. <laughs> yeah. Is it, it are, are all these subs CEA rated? That's... Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. I have no interest in doing so, that. So, so Paul, I know you know. There's obviously you have uh, your G2 subs on here, but it looks like you you have other uh, equipment as well. You sell amps and speakers and batteries and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, you I, have I, pretty much just an online that. whole store here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so here's my look. Right. I need I need woofers. Cool. Back and forth. Back and forth. All right. Let's pull the trigger. Let's go. Uh, modest store. Send me like 800 pieces. Oh, okay. What's CES? <laughs> Give a shit. My money's not green this month or what? I know we're, we're, we're the company's shut down. We're at CES. We can't make woofers at CES. We're waiting and waiting and waiting. Jesus Christ. All right, CES is over. Great. All right, so hurry up. Let's go. Oh, no, Chinese New Year. Bro. Are you guys, are you like for real? Y'all get drunk for a month? I can't get drunk for 10 minutes. Like, okay, cool. And then this time goes by and then that time goes by. Well, guess what? Now, Guess how many other people are dealing with China that have way bigger wallets than me? Guess who's going to get first choice on the rush orders? Not, not your boy. <laughs> so we sat and waited and waited. I was like, all right, cool. So uh, how am I going to eat this this month? What, what are we going to What are we going to do? So I was sitting there and talking to my partner, and I uh, said, I'm done. Let's just make a store. I'll get Andrew Bailey on the phone. I'll get Baba Huja on the phone. I'll start. Uh, I'll, uh, watch. Let's see what I do. Give me 24 hours. In 24 hours, I was a dealer for 15 different brands. That stuff was on their shelves. Some I dropped shit, some I bought it. You know, you start out small, you know. Most people don't, you know, two buddies that get together and want to start the next big thing may not have 20 million laying around, you know, 100,000 square foot warehouse to be able to put in on this. So, yeah, rely on drop shipping. And, you know, um, <clears throat> I really put a lot of faith in Andrew Bailey and, and Bob from American Base. Um, to give me as much industry insight as they could. <clears throat> and uh, thankfully, those guys are stand up enough to do it without sabotaging. See, there's a lot of sabotagery in this, in this business. I've learned it really freaking sucks. But that, that, I don't know, that makes me feel good. Apparently, I'm about to stomp on somebody's pubes here shortly. I, I guess that's the only thing I could think. But I've had some really good uh, mentorship, I feel, along the way. And, and being in this game professionally 20 years, roughly, uh, I know a lot of people, and of those, a lot of people have done business with me in the past, and I've come in real handy for them, and they've come in real handy for me. And <clears throat> you know, we lost a couple of relationships of, of brands that we originally started out carrying. I mean, you know, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense, kind of scenarios, and you know, stuff like that. And then you know, it's just psychotic product availability issues. And, you know, it's it's one of those. Uh, what do they say? You're judged by the company you keep. You know, so whatever. It's going to reflect on me if this guy's continually out of 2,500 watt amps and I'm pimping his brand. And it's like, hey, are you? Yeah, I know you're on a shark trip right now catching sharks. Like, Why don't you don't have product? Stop posting ads on Facebook then. Stop, you know. 
So it's it's we've worked a lot, a lot trying to pull in as many brands as possible. I don't want to tell a <clears throat> a Terrence customer, no, I can't get that for you. Why? That's what they want, you know. Um, and it turns out that was a damn good move right there, you know. Um, I was extremely blessed to be able to pick up B2 Audio, you know, I've known Jay for a damn good minute. Um, Andrew at Ampere Audio, guys, oh my God, this is one of, and it, thankfully he was a Texas boy, you know. Ampere is based out of Tyler, Texas. We're in Houston, kind of, sort of. So Andrew's been really, really good to me over the years. Andrew, Andrew Bailey's a really good guy. Uh, Bob at America Base, true, true friends to me uh, on a business level and a personal level. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy with the lineup that we've got right now. But we had to get that lineup because we weren't getting woofers anytime soon, and I don't do ramen, so... Um, that's that's the way that kind of turned out, and then it was like, man, this is actually a whole lot better because um, I'm now the go-to guy, you know. And after a while, you have customers say, okay, cool, I need a I need to get a set of those those big you know, bolt cutter looking crippers for these lugs I got off of you. I'm like, say no more, fam, I got you. So it's like, no, why not carry tools? How the hell else? You can't you can't put car audio in a freaking car if you're a DIY guy in a garage. You can't put it together with a shoe. Where are they buying tools from? Oh, why are they not buying it for me? It's car audio tools. Why are they not buying crimpers for me? SMD. <laughs> Set me up. Hook me up. Help me out. I'm broke. I'm poor. I'm the guy. I know my shit. You know. Um, and great relationship with them. I mean, Steve is a stand up dude. Um. He's, he's my bucket list for buddy hangouts. He's definitely in my top five on my buddy hangout bucket list for car audio guys. But met a bunch of badass people and uh, built some really great relationships with the folks we do business with now. And if it wasn't for those guys, I, God only knows. You know, probably still be waiting on workers. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we, you're, you're the perfect guy to ask this question. Something that me and Derek always talk about, we're always thinking about. Online sales versus brick and mortars. Like, do you have thoughts on that? I know you do. I've done both. Uh, I ate words. I ate plenty of words. Uh, I was the brick and mortar guy. Oh, you're going to buy on the internet. Oh, okay. I didn't know that that level of bitch existed, but okay, cool. I, I was that guy for a long time, you know, and um, I, I've seen scenarios where shops were like, oh, you bought online? Oh, we don't install other people's merchandise. Like you just literally told your daughter, I'm not paying for your freaking first semester. Kick rocks. That's what you told your kid. You're freaking stupid. Go get that money. Don't hustle nobody. Go get that money. You know what I mean? Um, there's 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 not a shame in saying, absolutely, no problem. You know, like, you know, example, I'm over at Sound Evolution. It's me and Jess running the counter. And we're just banging out cars left and right, building relationships with people. And somebody walks in and. You know, um, everybody, and, and it's about everybody likes to rag on, on freaking Jonathan. This guy comes in with some autograph sundown. I want to tell him to kick rocks because he didn't buy it from me? No, man. It's one has to embrace the other. If you are on e commerce, I don't give a shit how far technology takes you. You are not fiberglass and panels for mass production on a freaking Kia because it ain't worth it. You've got to go to a custom shop. The custom shops are still there. And they're thriving right now really well. So one has to complement the other. You know, there will never not be a need for the printed page. There will never, in car audio anyways, not be a need for some manner of brick and mortar establishment. Now, they may have to evolve and Internet may have to evolve as time goes on. But for one to refuse to work in perfect unison with the other is actually foolish. And they're going to meet their demise. That's all there is to it. I cannot fabricate over the internet i cannot diagnose every single thing over the phone or on facetime i can't i try my best i'll sit there at the desk and i'll try my best to you know offer the as best tech support as i can i don't know that many people that have my level of knowledge on the day in day out you know two decades worth of running shops and installing and fabricating so i try and do what i can but at the end of the day man where what city are you in well i'm in you know rally north carolina south wherever it is Okay, I know this shop, this shop, and this shop, okay? Which one of these is closer to you? You really need to get into a shop. And I will tell a customer, I can't offer that service to you. You need to go to a shop. You spent $2,000 with me. 
you know, you felt comfortable doing that, but you won't spend 50 to 100 with this guy right over here. It's extremely qualified. I can get him on the phone. I know him. If I put my finger on it, he's going to take care of it. You know, so brick and mortar is going to have to embrace online. Online is going to have to embrace brick and mortar. Now you've got your rogue vigilantes that are slaying a product on Amazon and they don't give a damn, you know. Um, okay, well, that's, there's a place for that, but you reap what you show. Or you reap what you, what you sow. If you're going to, if you don't want the support, if you don't want this, or don't want that, it's all about the deal. Well, go out and get your deal. So in two weeks, when it goes to hell, I'll let your boy, you know, or go see the shop. Maybe you didn't do it right. Maybe you're still stuck. But the customer is going to have to learn to embrace both. And brick and mortar is going to have to learn to embrace e-commerce. E-commerce is going to have to learn to embrace brick and mortar. It's not a, it's not a freaking conflict. It should be a cooperation. You know? so that's the only way those two are going to work long term. This has to. Yeah. Uh, again, well put. I can tell, Paul, if you ever were involved in a like a job interview, you probably nailed it each time because <laughs> you, you so just the best I ever did. I shut down my mortgage company, right? I'm at home for three months and I'm bored and it's like I gotta go do something. Somebody randomly gets my resume. I don't even know how they got it. Um they told me to come in for a resume or come in for an interview. And uh we went through the paces. I was like, look, this is clearly I can sell, clearly I know, you know, this product, I know this service, I know this business, I already researched all that. Can I have a Coke? I'm really thirsty. The guy likes, like, you know, when you laugh so hard, you kind of spit up on yourself a little bit. He did that, hired me right there on the spot. It's like, I'm just, I'm just thirsty. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, don't. Weird to say, it popped in my head. I'm sorry. I digress. Uh, that's, yeah, uh, that's good. I mean, it's it, it's evident, you know, with our discussion with you here. Again, I, I'm going to kind of say it, even though I've said it before, you're, you're engaging in your conversation. So, and, and the way you answer questions and stuff, you can just tell that, uh, you have the knowledge and you, you have a, a very, um, uh, gifted way of, uh, sharing that. So, so I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll quit going there, but it's just true. It, it is what it is. Well, sometimes you see it with people. Sometimes you don't, I don't you want, have it. So I, I think it's, it's fear of failing. I think. I don't want to fail a customer. Uh, it's my livelihood. I love the return business. That's so badass. Oh, thank God you answered. Okay, I was looking for you. Bro, please help me. That's freaking awesome. I get to be a hero, you know? And it, I, I never really care. You ever bought a car and the salesman's dismissive of you? Like, you ask questions. Hey, hey, God, dude, that hits me in a certain point to where I just want to pop somebody in the mouth, you know? And I can't, I don't like being dismissed. You know, so I put myself in those shoes. If I'm a customer and I have this money, or I'm literally about to go into financial debt and finance this stuff, bro, you can't take five minutes and talk to me, please. Like, you have knowledge. You tell everybody else you have all this knowledge. Help me, man. You know, and, and I look at it and say, Dude, I got you. You know, <clears throat> that's the way. Three o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> really, dude. <laughs> what? Oh, bro, I, I know it's late. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> what you got? I got you. I'll walk around the house in my freaking underwear, talk on the phone. I don't mind. It's inconvenient, sure. But, I mean, what are we going to achieve in life that is convenient to achieve, you know? Sometimes you've got to – that's what it is, you know? Just don't neglect your family. You know? So, it's – I just – that's – I've got to. I've got to. Yeah. Yeah, you know? it's, it's a challenge. It's continual. So – um, we'll definitely send people over to your G2D audio sites. So they can check out some of your good stuff. And obviously you've got your subs right now on pre-order. Looks like they're on sale too. So people can hit you up for those. Check out, you got a ton of product on here. So if you guys need anything, amps, head units, woofer enclosures, batteries, um, 3 a.m. phone calls, three, you know, don't, don't call me 3 a.m. <laughs> alternators and like you said the smd stuff he's got all the and and a lot of uh tools. freaking spark innovations have you yeah, spark. oh my oh, god that's right yeah oh that yeah. Yeah. i was so pissed you got something before me i was so mad <laughs> i wanted i wanted to call uh <laughs> ed I to call rich, yeah. like, oh, rich. i want to well, be the first i want to be the yeah. first Ed, Ed like made a East coast trip. He came here. I think he stayed with Bruce cause Bruce is only about an hour from me. And, uh, mm. and then he made the journey here on his way somewhere else. And so we, you know, we did a live stream and stuff and he brought a Omi and some of the other tools. So it was for him. It was a, um, 
it was a business type trip. We had a great time. Ed's a, Ed's just a fantastic dude. I mean, he's just knowledgeable as he can be and, and just one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. So it, it was really cool hanging out with him. And, and it's, it's also awesome that, that their company's doing so well and you guys are carrying them and there pushing their products. So that, that's great too. Make sure you check out. I've got like seven shelves full of that stuff. It's insane. The hardest yeah. thing is stocking all the colors of this and colors of that. It's like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll make another order next week with some green switches. And then you're cha-ching. Four green switches. Really? That's not enough. Uh, you know, like, give me another $500 order of whatever at this point. I don't care. Just give me green switches. You know? Yeah. So. yeah sometimes the, the oh. options can, yeah, can definitely go far. It's like, you know, we need to, Ed, if you're listening, we need to focus, you know, let's keep it on a certain, <laughs> certain path here, dude. You've got a fantastic product. Just oh, let people yeah. get the blue one. You, you know? can have any color you want. Any color you want. Black. As long as it's blue. <laughs> That's right. Or black. <laughs> 90 day net. 90 net. Come on, Ed. Come on, Rich. <laughs> that, that stuff flies off the shelf. You guys wouldn't believe. Well, it's it's such a fantastic deal. I mean, I, they're obviously not making enough money. They need to jack their price up a little bit. But I told I mean, them. I yeah, told them. This exactly. Is a like, if you need it, you need it. You don't, you don't. But if you need it, yeah, don't charge a thousand. Damn. But y'all guys need to grow. Imagine what they could do with extra engineering time. Like Ed can say, here, you go build this. Let me go do my thing. Ed puts on a freaking lab coat and comes out with some crazy shit, you know? So that's yeah, what I I'm like here to see what's next. It's definitely like the, the parts and the, and the end product just, I'm like, he can't do this for 60 bucks. <laughs> what's going on here, Ed? So, but anyway, they've got great products. Get them while you can at the price they are, because he's going to listen to us eventually and they're going to make a yep. little bit more money yep. and raise the prices. <laughs> yep. So I don't know how much air fare to Pennsylvania is, but I may have to go out there. Yeah, yeah. We're, I thought we're about gonna... doing a big tour. That's another YouTube thing I was thinking about. I was like, man, I'll just <clears throat> let Gerard run the place and see how that works and just fly around and go meet everybody. Yeah, well, we're we're hoping, um, you know, we're hoping we're going to be able to do the Texas. We do an old school. We try to do a spring and a fall version of our little meet, that we little get-together. And uh, we do one in Texas, and Rob has to remind me of the town that we're in. It is I'd say outside spring. of Ennis. I can't think of Ennis. It. It's not spring. It's, it's not uh, spring. It's Ennis? um, it's, it's outside it's, of Ennis. About it's forty not minutes. Too far, probably an hour for you, something like Fort that. From Dallas, Waco, Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah. we're oh no, we're it's, a, it's a little bitty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a little hole in the wall. I think place. it's around because uh, Mike Watkins lives around uh, Houston. So it's like a two-hour drive for him, two, two hour, and a half okay. hour, something so like I that. Was... Scurry. Scurry, Texas. That's it. Yep. It's a hole in the wall. But but anyway, we have a really nice uh, farm <laughs> that they let us use, and we we have plenty of room for cars, and we have a really nice facility and all that. So anyway, cool. we'll uh, we'll let you know about that in the, in the fall. Hopefully, we're, Rob and I were trying to do SEMA and that at the same time, uh, work it into the same week, but uh, we'll just have to see if uh, – what, what's going to work out with that? But anyway, I know it's been a it's been a long day for you here. We appreciate you joining us here on Twelve Volt Talk, Absolutely. and anytime we'll send people over to g two d audio dot com. Is there anything else anywhere else you'd uh, check you out on Facebook? G two d audio. Yeah, uh, anything I think else? Facebook is G two Dynamics. Instagram is G two Dynamics Official. We um, I put up a, a actual product website for the for the brand itself. It's G two Car Audio dot com. Um, I need to update that because we've got some new mid base uh, drivers coming out. So I need to get those listed up there and hopefully all this product won't drown in the ocean. It'll get here right around August 1st, maybe a little bit before. I know they're working out the details right now. That's what all those messages were earlier, was Skype back and forth. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, a lot of a lot of units are pre-sold. The pre-sale on the subwoofers will be over um, this Saturday night, 11.59 p.m. And then we're going to launch a one-week uh, pre-sale for the mid-range drivers, the 6 and so I'm really proud of those. Those are going to be new to kick ass. So, yep. Sweet. Yeah. Make sure cool. you guys get your orders in. So you yeah, can, they're cheap right now. That's right. Get get you the just first gotta ones wait a little off bit. the first you ones off the bat. Hey, this is not Wolfram. We're not doing a six month pre order, right? Oh man. Oh, I didn't Shot go there. Fired. Did I? Did I go Shot there? Fired. <laughs> I'm never going to get any consideration from them ever again. Well, <laughs> you know, hey, it, blame it on me. 
I'm, I'm just the independent guy. I blame everything on Derek, on, anyways. So I'm at home. Fine. My wife says something. I to me. call I'm nuts like, a bolt oh. and bolts nuts. So <laughs> just don't even listen to me. Well, I, my, hey, my stuff was already built and paid for. I paid cash. <laughs> <laughs> my stuff's getting on a boat tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> I think they, are, they might be already on a boat or getting loaded. I don't know. Right. So uh, <laughs> forget, I the problem is, I don't know where I'm putting it all. My warehouse is small and full. And it didn't used to be small and full, but I figured the best way to motivate myself to sell product is to stock it. So that's what I've done. And now I'm kind of in a pickle. So I've got to go on a madman selling spree and uh, try to convince my partner to get his damn F650 out of the garage. I don't know if that's going to work. I doubt it. He'll probably tell me kick rocks on that one. So, <laughs> but yeah, that, it's going to be real good fun. News. Good news for the customers. Day, I'm getting base heads from the whole damn city of Houston. We're going to come out and there's going to be free whoopers handed out and barbecue. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be a big public freaking stink. So hopefully I'll rate Facebook that day. That'll be awesome. Sounds good. Well, thanks again for your time, Paul, and uh, no we appreciate problem. appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, we will send people over to your website, check out your products, maybe pre-order a woofer or two or ten, and uh, check out some of the other products that you have. And uh, everything that you do for Car Audio, we appreciate you and and all the knowledge that you share with everybody and you know joining us here to talk about some of your past some of your history and some of the things that you're working on i think is uh is really cool for everybody to hear that so we're gonna sign off for tonight and rob's got to thank real quick the people who have sent us a little bit of cheese during our session here yeah so we got mr crowley aka mark crowley scott aka civic the third era byron shambliss just for Byron. laughs coming in big. Yeah, Byron's a man. He's everywhere. Gene <laughs> Nava and Andrew2944. Appreciate all of you. Yeah, you guys rock. Thanks again. And, uh, you know, you can always check us out on youtube.com slash 12 Talk. You can check out 12volttalk.com, and it'll take you right to our YouTube channel. We'll have the show posted here. This is episode 80 with Paul from G2 Dynamics. Thanks again, Paul, for hanging out with us. Everybody, y'all have a great week, and we'll catch you next time. Cool. Peace out. Peace yeah, out. Yeah, later. Bye. Oh man. Yeah, we forgot. We forgot to tell. Forgot to tell him. It's okay because he, you know, <laughs> yeah, he. I, I didn't. Day. I didn't realize that that he had done. Yeah. He, he'd been through that today, or we wouldn't have had him on tonight. So, yeah, if in case either. you guys didn't catch that, he had a um, he had a death in the family today. So. Um, yeah, I kind of feel bad, honestly, that that we still yeah. <laughs> ask him to come on. But I didn't know until he actually joined. So, yeah, I sorry, didn't Paul. Either. Thanks for hanging out with us. But uh, I'm sure everybody understands. But Rob and I will hang out with you for a few minutes. But I'm going to take yeah. off this jacket. Yeah, well, let's show the shirt. He's freaking burn up. Dean's yeah, in the chat. And we're, we're representing, bro. Look yeah, Dean, Dean's up in the house and he yeah. sent us a shirt and they make them big enough for me. Yeah. Hey, we got the same size. 3X? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Dean said we like the big boy sizes. I was like, well, we're big boys. Yeah. That is, I mean, that's a cool, that's a 4th of July <laughs> Yeah, shirt. I know. Like that, hey, business. that's a sweet shirt. We're going to the beach. I'm going to rock it. You know it. Yeah. I'm going I'm to turn off the, uh, turn off the little display name so we can see our full shirts. There you go. Of course, I got my, yeah, yeah that's pretty sweet. I, I like the, I like the color too. It's a nice a color. marine 12 volt talk. Yes, sir. We will have to do that. Yeah. Well, let's see what uh what everybody's got to say tonight. All right. Y'all are gonna have to have to pardon me and Rob because we have been what did my mom used to call it? Burning the candle at both ends. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a, just an example. And I'm not complaining by any means because I I, I love what I do. But yesterday was like a 15 hour work day for me between day job and then trying to get a video out for you guys, which I'll have one this week on Thursday, in addition to having one on probably Sunday. Yeah. And Rob just released one today, the Sony head unit. You guys yeah. have to check that out. The 50 or was it 100 watt by four is what it was rated max. Yeah. 100 watts by four. Yep. 400 watt head unit. Yeah, that's a pretty cool one. So that one has, he's got it bridge going to the Savard subwoofer. Yeah. And uh, that's a it fun, little, fun little test. That's a, that's right. I think that's right. 
Uh, I mean, Dean is the perfect example of what Paul was talking about, about, you know, trying to do your job, make the video content. In their case, they had a agency or whatever doing the, uh, or they had, they hired a production company to come in when they did Carl Dynasty and do that. And they're still talking about how much work it is. And it's like, you know, Dean and Fernando, they're doing this all day long. And Dean stays up till like, I don't even know, two, three o'clock yeah. in the morning, editing videos every night. We need a Dean on our team. Yes, we do. <laughs> to do all our work. Like, yeah, man, I hey, had a big need, dinner. I don't feel like editing videos. We Think need to check it? Fiverr. You ever, you ever bought anything oh, off Lord. of Fiverr? Who knows what? Yes, I, that, actually, my logo come from Fiverr. My, my old school yeah. stereo logo <laughs> came from Fiverr. Dude, I paid five dollars plus i think i paid five extra to get the vector version of it but still it was like super yeah. cheap i think i paid like 45 or something like that but you know yeah the, he, the five he, he is just a dean. hook right dean you know what it is we seem like we got we, this all together but have you seen the meme where they have like um homer simpson and he, he looks felt and then on the back he's held with with rubber bands and clips that's basically how we are yeah it's kind of we, we shouldn't be telling the secrets man Shouldn't yeah. be shouldn't be letting everybody know, but that that's in case we sound incoherent at times. We have to explain it, or if we call bolts nuts or nuts bolts, yeah. then or yeah, <laughs> after the twenty two hundred fiftieth person replied back, it's a nut, you dummy, it's not a bolt. I was like, oh god, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time. Well, and then it's, it's like you've you've already done like like you've uploaded it, you've rendered it. Yes. It's like I'm not I'm no, not going you, back and doing it. I know that Doug I seen Doug do it before at Soundman. He's released one and had a problem and he actually pulled it. And if you do that and people get the email and you click on the link and it says video's not available, I think that's yep. probably worse than just having up a bad one and just doing a follow up explanation. I don't know. But we've all done it. It's, it's just the level of you have to be more careful the more viewers and stuff you get about stuff like that but it's still you, you you miss things you know even i send videos to rob and stuff and he sends me his and we try to kind of preview them for each other to make sure we don't miss stuff and we still just sometimes miss it so it's tough yeah we just comment everything you messed up after the video's <laughs> out <laughs> Well, oh, sometimes man. we think we think about things that, you know, hey, this would have been cool to add this, but you're like, yeah, but that would have added another, yeah. you know, five hours yeah. to my record time to be able to test all the different, <laughs> uh, what is it, the different file types and the different outputs of the RCAs and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, dude, like this unit, when I tested that, I was like, I'm not going through all the features on this thing. There ain't no way i could barely figure out how to bridge it to the sub channel well that was a fail on the manual side and everything else about how yeah. that worked that wasn't your fault it shouldn't be that difficult no it's yeah it's something else yeah we, we got any questions for us in here yeah i don't know no? if we have any questions and sorry again paul had to had to drop and we didn't we didn't even get a chance to explain to him about staying on but we wouldn't ask him to stay on anyway no. because of his family situation yeah tomorrow's another video Jeez. life goes on not for Man. me though it's like next week's another video it's maybe it's hard enough to do one a week I know. and i'm trying to bump it up to two and I, I don't know how long i'm gonna last because if i had it so i could narrow it down and have like a template and just drop stuff in and just be able to make basic changes which i know a lot of the bigger youtubers kind of do that or some of them have other people do their stuff for them do their yeah. editing but if there was a way to do that, then I would. Vegas video. I, Dude, I still use Vegas to make my rolling uh, credits. It ticks me off so bad to have to use that because I... Oh, I, dude. I, I Sony went Vegas to, is horrible. Well, I went in to add a couple of uh, names and yeah. tried, to re, tried to render it stuck at 1%. Dude. Really? Why, didn't you, why don't at, you just keyframe it Luma? I could. And I'm you just don't want to, to redo the whole thing. I don't want to redo I, it. I've I totally already got feel, it in here. I totally feel you on that. <laughs> like I, that is totally 100% justified. 
and what I've been doing is just using the one I have and then just add the, the most recent people, which I think the one I just did, I, I left off two people and I apologize to the most recent ones, but sometimes it happens. Yeah. Oh, here's yeah. a question. Paul is a great guy. Yeah, Paul is. He's a good guy. Um, It's, what's it called? The mass, why can't I think of it, man? The expen- critical mass U12. The twelve thousand dollar subwoofer or whatever. What? You hadn't seen those? Let me see if I can find it. No, I, I've seen them, but they what? put them on eBay for it. It's not that much, but it's going in whose car? It's in my wife's car. What? Yeah, let me see. Let me see if they got it listed ridiculously on here, and I'll show you. Is that, is that like the MSRP versus the real price? Yeah. Thing this. Oh, okay. It's ninety nine percent off today only. Ninety nine percent off. <laughs> uh, Get your twenty five thousand dollar subwoofer for twenty five dollars. I can't find it. It's the sh- it's the shallow twelve. I I think they list it for like twelve hundred dollars or something. Mm-hmm. You can get them relatively affordably. Oh, there you go. That's right. Third era. I saw you post that, dude. First place trophy at SPL show with your Lanzar, your 16 year old Lanzar subs. That's sweet, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah, the Hyphonics amp, we, we do have to hate on it if it's not a yeah. Zed. If, it, if it's a Maxonics, then <clears throat> sorry, we have to hate on that. Yeah, he said he meant, he meant when I tested it, I said 400 watt amp. Oh, <laughs> he thought it was the KXA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I, I know that they've got expensive stuff, critical mass. I just don't know. I don't know if Brad's going to put some in his new uh, Type R Civic. He's doing a whole system. Yeah. I think that's just all marketing because you could find those at regular prices. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that Power 650, man, that would be a cool one to put in that car. I was thinking about a, a single 650 or 1,000 or something to put in there Dude. since I'm going to do three-channel. The Power 1000. Yeah. Or where the 25 to life one would be. That's would what I'm saying. The, yeah, that's that's the one that would be the showy. It would be really yeah. cool. I did um I did finally get that plastic polish in that, that everybody recommended. Um, did it work? The three-stage. Yes, it worked really well. No. Um, so I've made a, a quick, well, I say quick, but you know how it is. Whenever you do things with video, <laughs> it took me probably 30 or 45 minutes to capture all the video, but... I'm planning on doing another midweek release with something like that, showing me polish up the exterior of that Power T 1000 4 amp. And unless you like really get a magnifying glass down to it, you can't tell that it's got yeah. any scratches or anything in it. Hey, Kip, I got, I got one to test here. It's the four yep. channel, though. Yeah, the four channel, and there's a was the, they have that eight hundred the eight hundred dot five on Hi Fi Sam connection for like three thirty five as a refurb, and I'm sure Kip will answer this. I'm sure he, I'm sure that uh, Hi Fi Sam connection is a authorized reseller too. Yeah, I think they are. I think that might be where I got that one at. Yeah, it is. It is. That's the, the link you sent. And then uh, they've got like the 800.5. They've got the 400.4. They've got the, I want to say the 1600.1 or 1200.1. Yes, they are. Yep. The 12 to 16 and then the 2400. Yep. Yeah, but I don't, they do still have the 2400 zone uh, refurb too, don't they? Yep, I think they had a few and they're of them. Six hundred, they're five ninety nine, something like that. Yep, yep. Uh, I just missed a comment, so I ask a question. The cool thing about them KX is they do the power, like the slash at two and one ohm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And like, that. The oh, the these. bass knob. That's like the oh, coolest. that's the coolest bass yeah. knob ever. That is, man. You can't you can't beat that bass knob. I hope they got that patented. You know, Dean, that they're about to come up there with a with a like a black helicopter and about to take that quad box back. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get your new one or is it still the 
This is still the demo version. <laughs> Dean, Dean's giving that thing hell, man. <laughs> gonna, it's gonna have like little bits and pieces of woofer remaining when he when he when they get it back. Yeah, that's the last time we send stuff to Dean. Yeah. <laughs> he said demo. He still got the demo. <laughs> oh Lord, Dean. You put the five K in Haley's car. <laughs> Oh man! Oh boy! Yeah, that's crazy. I missed a question. There was one up here. I scrolled past. Oh, show off the polish you used. Uh, hold on, I'll bring it up real quick. I have to bring up my Amazizzle. Show you what it's called. I don't know. My brain is fried. I can't remember the name of it. It's a three-stage wow. kit. While you're looking for that, I'm going to show something. Novus. Oh, Here yeah, the Novus. It's the Novus. Um, let's see. Since we're in after chat now, I got I got something I want to show off here. If I can get it. He's going to show stuff. I'm gonna, I'll show yeah. the screen here so you can see the Novus. We'll try to remember to leave a, a link in the description. It's a three-stage um, plastic polish. It works well. And I know that people have posted before that you can use it like on head units and stuff too to, to fix the screens. What you What's got that? there? What's it look like? I'm going to oh. make you go full screen so I can see it better. Right. Oh, it got Savard Wrap. Yeah, the new Wrap series, man. Check it out. Look at that. I've got to build a box and stuff for it, but yeah. That's a is that a twelve? I've, this is a twelve. I've got more than just this, but you guys aren't going to see them right oh, now. Oh, Tiza. Yeah. Tiza and a pleaser. I found it cheaper at the container store. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Rob and I were just talking about the last uh, twelve volt talk we did with with um, with Dean and then Kip joined. That one had like a lot of views. It was it was kind of crazy. That it's one, one of was... our most viewed live streams. Ever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, some of them will get good views after. Like we pull clips out. Like we did mm -hmm. the uh, had Dean. I uh, had I'm sorry. Had Kip talk Kip. about why Kicker did square subwoofers. That one did really good on its own. We just pulled out the the short explanation and why they sold at walmart and i think we pulled out some eric clips from rockford that did well but like you said the live version that one of course it was a you know it was a good interview and it's good to have people that are from the industry kind of go back and forth and bounce off each other and it's obvious that kip and and dean have uh have had these discussions before so they were able to kind of play off each other and that worked out well yeah yeah that was a good episode Fun one. The best ones are when we don't have to talk so much. Yeah. It, it Somehow that makes the show better. I don't yeah, know I mean, why. I've, I've listened to Paul, <laughs> and I, I talked about it several times, you know, watching him in video or watching him on YouTube. There's there's certain number of people, like the, the guy I like to watch, and I, Rob, I think you watch him too, the one that does the, the solar batteries, Will Prowse. Yeah, yep. He's another one. He just, yeah. he's, they're just so engaging that you start watching them and it's just like, I just fall into the screen. I'm just like, this dude can say whatever. He can talk about, you know, buying a car or, or going on a vacation. I'm just sitting there. It's like, he, he, they just have a gift of, I don't know, being interesting. And Paul's that way too. So when he, whenever he does live streams, whenever he does interviews or stuff like that, you know, it's really interesting to, to watch him because he's, uh, he's just intriguing. Yeah, we had him. He's yeah, right we here had, on the uh, channel. We had Ryan on before. <laughs> yeah. I think he's been really busy with his um, his uh, dealership. Dealership. Yeah, I think he, him, and somebody else went in part ways to a a dealership, and he's yeah. been really busy with that. And that's why he, you've not seen many videos. And most people probably don't realize that Ryan bought a Dino because he was one of the ones that you know. If you test amps and everybody thinks that, you know, that's all you do and they're going to send you this and send you that. Well, I think he got kind of a little perturbed because they wanted me to test stuff and they kept saying, Hey, you can do this. I'm like, I can't, 
do all that. He's like, well, fine. I'll get my own dyno and do my own testing. I was like, okay, please do. <laughs> Cause it's great. I mean, I want more people to be testing it too, but it ain't all it's cracked up to be as far as being able to do that and then make all the videos. I mean, I could sit here and do three or four different amp tests a day if I won't make in videos and just, but, but then what's the purpose, right? I don't want to just have a bunch of dyno sheets. I want to show you guys what, what goes on and, and share the experience with you. So that's why it takes longer to do it that way. But Oh, D.I., well, you're underestimating my strength. That was my left hand, too. Yeah. Imagine what well, I could do with Rod, the right Rod's right kind of got, he's like, he's like hidden boss. You know, he, <laughs> he, don't, he don't like bulge with muscles, but dude's like, he's strong like an ox. <laughs> <laughs> what do we miss here? I don't know. I'm seeing... Yeah, I'm gonna have to see. Did did he did Dean put up that video of the 5K on the quad box? Because I'm gonna have to check. I don't know. I don't think so. One oh, of them is that, put, is that the one you're working on tonight, Dean? And one of them he had on the other channel. They've been doing some taste testing, yep. Haley. Yep. Yeah, some, I saw that. Yeah. Although That's the one where they got the people, everybody in the like in the. Um, the crowd and the uh, they, they went to like a mall or something to test it out in the parking lot and they started playing it and people started like coming over to the car like yeah, yeah. this is a little uncomfortable I think we need to leave now <laughs> <laughs> bass draws yeah, people yeah. Dean yeah yeah the solo X look at oh Kip what is Kip talking about so we need a we need a, a quad solo X box oh but no, I had a good idea for the next box. Yes, let's hear it. They need a budget box, quad box. Budget? Like five, six hundred dollar range. So like what would that include? End. Would that include, like, instead of Russian uh, birch, birch, it's going to have, like, Chinese birch? MDF. Oh, man, that thing would be heavy then. Yeah, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be heavy no matter what. I guess you could Does just use Does it have to be time. four, though? Does it have to be a quad? I guess I it know, does. It's, kind of the, it it's the theme. It's like the. It's impressive to have four subs. It is impressive, yeah. Even if it's eights. Like, it could be eights as well. Oh, that would be pretty slick. Yeah, do a four-eight yeah. We box. need different versions of these, Kip. We're just saying. Four-eights, four-tens, four-twelves, four-fifteens. Yeah. The Work kicker doesn't that. make any eighteens anymore, right? Mm-mm. Not, not, not yet. Not unless yeah. they got something that they haven't yeah. told anybody about, or they won't tell us, because because we won't sign anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we just spill it all, man. We can't know anything. Yeah. Well, it, I think it is intriguing to see the kind of the feedback on that quad box and how much interest it's drawn yeah yeah i think you're right they're gonna have like a quad series yeah i mean if you guys want to have the 12 volt talk series version of it well we can can, we we might be able to work out a licensing deal (laughs) yeah (laughs) you could put our big ugly face this is like a shark tank you know yeah I, i gotta get so much per item plus you know, a little bit plus, of the profits for eternity. Plus, plus our face is stitched on the side, like the logo. <laughs> I don't know. That that might not sell things if we do that. So. <laughs> Just sign yeah. the NDA. I couldn't tell people if I did, Kip. So why is it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there man. you go. Four Solo X18s with four 2400s. Oh, man. As a package deal. Yeah, that would be like $20,000. Yeah. See, here we go. Four eights, four ninety nine. Hmm. I don't know. That's in a box. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be tough. That'd be cool. Yeah. The shipping. But the question is, would it be worth doing four eights if you could just do what the cone area of what less than two twelves yeah. is four eights? But it's so. still it's still just to have the four drivers. Just to have four? Yeah, I guess yeah. it is, because you can see them all flexing and kind of in mm. unison. That is, that is kind of sweet. 
a dual box. Yeah. I mean, they have those. They have the dual. Yeah. And they even got the single L7 boxes, too. Oh, boy. Dean says the internet loves 4.8s. Yes. Yeah, they do. Yes. I love I love small drivers as well. Well, that that Savard box that I have, um, Rob, did you did you hear that? No, I don't know if I had it when you were here. Did I have it last time you were here? The what? The quad, the four Savard eight high Q's in the no, box. No, you didn't. It wasn't done yet. That's right. Because we did it after the spring meet last year. I had that guy do it. Um, Matthew, yes. Um. I spent a hundred dollars sending the amp over to the UK to Sam. It got held up in customs. It's in customs right now. So they're going to have fun trying to get into that box though, because it, it was packed pretty well. <laughs> but as soon as Sam gets it and is able to do the updates, he's going to make a video on his channel and then he's going to send it back. And I actually didn't only send him the audio pipe. I sent him the tar amps uh, HD 3000 also, because it turns out that in the UK, it's not as easy to get those amps as it is here. And I was just going to buy one for him over there, but I think the HD 3000 was like 350 bucks oh, US Lord. over there. And yeah. I'm like, it's only 200 here and I could put it in the same box. So he, uh, he should be getting it. I'm hoping later this week, but it's all, yeah up with the customs and according to him if it got held up there then they might try to charge him for it being an import and i i wrote on there and all the custom forms i'm like it's repair and return you know this is not a gift it's not something that he's going to gain anything from other than hopefully some viewers but i'm yeah. excited to see him get it and see what he can do and i actually did buy another audio pipe so i could test it at 16 volts because we didn't try that before i sent oh, it to no. him <laughs> Dude. So we just have fun playing. We got <laughs> lots of fun stuff coming. Yeah. Transcontinental. Yes. Wilson Audio Labs is transcontinental now. Well, the, a lot of a lot of people like it. A lot of people Sam is um he's very technical. He's yeah. very good in explaining, but I've had a lot of people I've had I say a lot. I've had some people comment that they couldn't keep up with him. But the majority of the comments that I get from him are extremely, uh, that he's extremely good and helpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's <That's> true. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. He's, um, he's talented. There's no doubt that, that he's just a smart person and, you know, it takes a dumb person to find a smart person to help out. So <laughs> we fit together well. And I yeah. tried to get other people too. I've tried to get amp technicians and Rob knows this for years. I'm like, Hey, I just want you to do a segment. Talk about it. Yeah. I can't really do that too busy. You don't want to do that, whatever. Mm. And I understand that's cool. The good thing about what Sam does is he does the whole thing. Like he'll, he'll do the segment and he'll make the video and then send me the video. I pay him. Of course he's a paid, yeah. um, I won't say he's an employee. He's a contractor of Williston yeah. Audio Labs, but <laughs> he's a nat will worker. Yeah, he he does a, he does a great job. Oh man, super well, glue a four eight q q eight cubes together. Yeah. There you go. See, people are thinking, man. RVH yeah. has got it. That little the q eight cube. That thing's cool. You seen it when we were there? Yep. Have you heard one of those? No, I haven't. They're pretty impressive. Man, well, what do you say we sign out? Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go to work early tomorrow. I know, it's um wow. Well, um, just to let everybody know, um, we're gonna be off for a few weeks. Um, we have some things coming up. Rob and I both are on vacation, uh, coming up, and we have have some other things. But we will be back. I think we our next scheduled interview is July. That Eighth, eighth, yep, yeah, and uh, that'll be a fun one. So, uh, yeah, if you don't hear from us before then, we're not going anywhere. We're just not yeah. gonna be here. Yeah, so. we're doing vacation things. Yeah, <laughs> everybody needs a chance to, you know, 
Yeah. Relax. <laughs> Just relax, man. <laughs> seriously, uh, though, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. It's always fun. Thanks for uh, supporting us, sending us it's a little bit of cheese when you can. We will continue to do this as long as we can and bring on cool guests. Yeah. So we'll right. sign out for tonight. Everybody have a good rest of your week and we'll see you back on July 8th. If something happens and we do something before then, we'll let you know, but don't count on it. <laughs> Watch Later. our YouTube though. Cause we got videos coming out. So yeah. check us out. High five. See us on those. Little snaudio. Peace out people. Later. Later.